Chess.com just changed how brilliant moves are determined. So for those of you who have played on chess.com for a while, you'll know that brilliant moves used to be kind of random and you never really knew when you were gonna get them or even sometimes why you got them. Well, now they've changed them and right here, this sentence kind of explains what they did. Brilliant moves must now sacrifice material in some way and must be the best or nearly the best move in a position. I actually think this is a really good change and I wanna show you a game that I just recently played where I had two brilliant moves and we can talk about why they were brilliant and why I think the change they made actually makes a lot of sense. All right, so the game I'm gonna show you was against a 2000 rated player and it was a 10 minute game and I have two brilliant moves. You can see those at the top there and we're gonna talk about those when we get to them in the game. Let's jump right in. All right, so I was black in this game and I'm gonna leave these little icons on as we go through the game. So we had a Latvian Gambit. I've been experimenting with this quite a bit lately and having some really good results. Um, it's it's kind of tricky and a lot of players tend to get into trouble. So this is what a lot of people have been playing, capturing and then just taking the knight on c6. Very crazy and complicated stuff happens after queen h5. Uh, for example, I can play g6. They'll take it because the pawn is pinned. And then knight f6 happens. They'll move the queen, I'll take. And, you know, we get this kind of crazy position. But a lot of people just don't want to deal with that. And so what they do instead is just simply take the knight here. And I don't usually have too much of a, of a problem with this. I tend to get into a pretty nice position. It just lets both bishops out right away. Uh, you know, lots of open files to attack stuff. And so I, I like these positions. So my opponent played knight c3. Uh, I played bishop c5, just going ahead and getting the bishop on this uh, diagonal, putting some pressure on the weak f2 square. Captured, and I went ahead and took it. So, I mean, you can see what I was talking about. Like, these bishops are just completely dominating the center here. My queen has lots of good options. And, you know, I, I like this kind of position for black. So, queen h5 uh, check. I'm not really sure the idea. I mean, I guess it sort of creates some weaknesses along the, uh, sorry, along the dark squares here. And so, I guess that's what my opponent was going for. I don't really like that. For white because it's, it's losing tempo and so yes there's some weaknesses but you know white's really falling behind here in, in development so uh 97 computer gives it a question mark because it i don't know why it likes you know queen or, or even moving the king but for for most practical reasons i think this is a much better move i'm um, just developing the piece so we have b3 uh computer does not like that one queen d7 so what i'm doing here is you know, when you look at this position, this bishop's in a good spot, this bishop's in a good spot, knight's okay, it can't move, but also not in a bad spot. I really need to work on the other pieces, and so I want to play queen here, and it really leaves me the option to castle both ways, although I was really wanting to go queen side just because of the, you know, there are some weaknesses here, and that bishop could be a little bit dangerous. So queen d7, the knight comes in, and I'll go ahead and give you guys a second. Can you spot the best move here for black? There's a there's a nice little move here that kind of just shows up. And I'll just give you a few seconds. If you want to pause the video, see if you can find what I played here. All right, if you're ready to see the move here, it's actually queen to d4. And this is really a, a simple fork is what it is, right? I'm attacking the rook. I'm attacking the knight now twice. So we got the bishop and the queen. And it's only defended one time. And even though my bishop, you know, can be captured here, if white decides to do that, well, then I'm going to be taking the rook. And, you know, this is much better for me. Not only did I get the uh, the rook, I also have pressure on, on the bishop here, which is not really easy for, for white to deal with something like king d1. And then I'm probably just going to castle. Even, you know, sacrificing the knight here is actually pretty good because now this rook comes over and I've got boom, uh, boom, boom. This is happening. Um, and white's best move is actually to give up the queen. So, for example, if, if the queen goes back to like h4, um then we can come rookie one check takes queen takes king up and then take here on d2 king f3 and you can see white's king is in big trouble i've got the queen the bishop the rook uh, you know even though i'm down a piece it really doesn't matter what black white's position is terrible there's actually g5 is a really good move and black's just totally crushing so uh going all the way back this queen d4 move is just a fork uh, and so the only thing white could actually do now is go back to where they came from. So really just wasted some moves. And I, I basically got this move in for free, which, you know, maybe it's not the greatest move, but it's, it's, uh, it's something. So I went ahead and castled 
And uh, the knight's defended by the bishop, right? So um, white can't take that. Even if they could, I could still bring the rook over and pin the queen to the king. And so now you can see I've got all both pieces out, all, all three pieces out, actually. Uh, this rook is ready to go. The queen's ready to go. There's only one piece that's really not in the action, and that's going to be coming real soon. And so at this moment in the game uh, is when you want to start paying attention to tactics, right? Like initially, you're kind of trying to get all your pieces on good active squares. And once you've done that and you can't really improve the position of your pieces anymore, that's usually um, when the tactics start to show up. Okay, and you're going to see that real soon. So white played bishop to b2, and I went ahead and went through with the plan, got the final piece into the action. Okay, and now white played uh, castles, and I played knight to d5, just, you know, lining up of this discovered attack on the queen, bringing this knight, which you could argue that this knight was probably one of my worst pieces. So I'm just going to try to bring it in, and maybe, you know, this looks like one of white's best pieces. So if I can take one of my worst pieces, trade it for one of white's good pieces, that's usually a good thing to do. Uh, white captured, and now I found a really nice move, which actually was one of the brilliant moves in this game. So I'm going to give you guys a second. Go ahead, pause if you would like. What do you think the best move is for black in this position? Well, the move is actually bishop to a3, and I did see this in the game, and the point here is that uh, my queen was under attack, right? So what I'm doing is pinning the bishop to the king, so it can't move off that diagonal now. Now, it could move and capture my bishop, but if that happens, well, then I'm coming in here for the checkmate, right? King can't move. It's, it's kind of a almost like a weird smothered type of mate where the, you know, white's own pieces are blocking the king in. So because of that, uh, my threat is simply just to take the bishop next move, right? And that's also going to be mate. And so black, or sorry, white actually just has to block. And so they played c3 to block off my queen from, from getting there. And um, I just took the knight. And now white made another mistake, queen to c4. And again, I had another brilliant move that was the second brilliant move of the game. And I'll go ahead and give you a second. What do you think I played in this position? All right, well, before I tell you the answer, I actually recently did a video on the top mating patterns in chess, and one of those mating patterns showed up here, and so you're going to see that now. All right, so here's the move. Uh, I played queen takes d2 check. So uh, obviously, you know, the king can't move because the bishop is covering everything, and the rook's defending my queen, and so I'm forcing white to take with the rook. And then the whole point of this checkmate is that this bishop is really just controlling all the the places the king would like to go to so i can swing my rook down uh forcing the rook back and then we've got two attackers and we can just deliver the checkmate either way like this and so it's kind of like um like an opera mate where you have the bishop and rook combo now this one is a little bit different in the sense that a lot of times you would have this bishop maybe being like over here if this pawn was gone and it would be defending the rook that way and that would be kind of like your opera mate setup this one the bishop's over here and the rook's actually defended by another rook so it's a little bit different but the same idea, right? And that's what I noticed um, about that position, um, but, you know, by just sacrificing the queen. So that was the second brilliant move of the game. Now, if we go back and talk about these brilliant moves, uh, if you remember the definition of the brilliant move was that you had to sacrifice material. So, you know, in this case, I'm not taking a knight and I'm also giving up my bishop, right? So I, I kind of um, checked that box. Okay, sacrifice material. And then you had to play the, you know, one of the best moves. And that this is actually the best move in this position, according to the computer, Bishop A3. So I checked both of those boxes, and I got a brilliant move. Okay, and uh, then this one, C3 takes, again, uh, taking here with my queen was sacrificing my queen. So that's box number one was checked. And then also, was it the best move? Well, yeah, it just leads to mate. And so it was also the best move. And so because I, you know, fulfilled both of those things, ended up getting a brilliant on that one as well. This is an alternate checkmate, by the way. Um, so yeah, that's how brilliant moves work. That's also a good example of how mating patterns show up in games, right? Like as soon as I saw this position, I was like, you know, this just, it really looks good because my bishop's covering this. It looks like the king is kind of stuck, doesn't like have a lot of places to go. How can I take make use of the fact but they've got all these pieces lined up, and then that's why when I noticed Queen takes e2. So uh, hopefully that helps you guys uh, understand how brilliant moves work. Um, I'd be curious to see if you guys start seeing more brilliant moves in your games. 
uh, let me know if that's the case. Also, if you want to see more um, mating patterns, or if you haven't seen that video already, I talk about not just the Opera's mate, but like a lot of other ones. Um, I'll put a link to that over here. You can check that out. But um, as always, thanks for watching. Stay sharp, play smart, take care.